Magical cabbage. What the fuck was I even looking at? Like, apparently, if you eat food, very good food, you turn into magical girls. That's a first. Like, that is a first. I thought I saw everything when it comes to anime and manga, but clearly, I was wrong. I have never seen people eat food and then turn into magical girls. Or cosplay into magical girls. I, I, I've never seen that. And I, I saw what Dojima was doing in that transformation sequence. Like, if anyone didn't understand, that pose is JoJo. Right? That straight up looked like a JoJo pose. Like, look at the thumbnail picture of what I did for my Dungeon Girl episode. And you will see Joseph is posing in the exact same way as Dojima. What the fuck? Like, straight up, what the fuck? So, is this JoJo Day? Straight up, is this JoJo Day? I I, I guess Dio's The World Stopped Everything. It's like, let's reference JoJo all day today. Hey, I'm fine with that, though. JoJo's badass. But still, that fucking magical girl transformation, man. Like, that, that shit fucked me up. I'm like, like I, did, I did not even see that shit coming. Like, my God, I, I love Food Wars because it knows how to have equal exchange. Like, it knows how to give both genders the proper fan service. Like, it gives fan service for the guys, and it gives fan service for the women. And it's equal. It's like there's equal amount of fan service for both sides, and I like that. I like how both genders can be very happy with the fan service in the series, because it's not unequal. Like, it's not just, you know, fan service for guys, but there's also fan service for women as well, and I like that. I really like that, and it makes me respect this series just to see how the mangaka is willing to do something like that, especially with, you know, last week's episode with Dojima, you know. Let, let's move past that. <laughs> I don't even want to get into that. But, thing is, okay... I really respect that. I, I really do. So I, I just wanted to lay my piece on that. I'm glad both sides, you know, get, you know, equal fan service. So I saw the preview of next week's episode. Like, I, I saw the preview after, you know, the ending song. I don't usually watch previews. I usually don't. But I had to because I was curious of what the dish was going to be and, you know, what was probably going to happen next week because Food Wars is actually getting me engaged. Like, I, I really want to know what's going to happen, and if it keeps this shit up, I want to read the manga. Like, if it keeps this up, I want to pull an assassination classroom on this series, and I want to straight up just start binge reading it. I, I really am, if it continues this, because this is freaking epic. And seeing that preview, I, I just want to read ahead right now just to see why. Shinomiya was crying. Uh, okay, let me let me just take a couple of back pedals, like back steps, okay? Because I, I, I know, I heard... The manga readers last week telling me about Shinomiya in the comments. Like, I, I saw a shit ton of Chibits that were manga readers. Thank you for not spoiling, by the way. I'm actually, I, I do want to say that. Thank you for the manga readers for not spoiling anything that's going to happen. I'm thankful you held back and didn't spoil what was going to happen, but you did tell me I should expect something in the near future. But anyways, thing is, okay, Shinomiya, as Chibits were telling me, he has a spinoff series, and I'm like... This, this, this fucking prick, this, this fucking prick has a spinoff, like, give Hinako, give Hinako a spinoff, don't, don't give Shinomiya a spinoff, I, I, I'm sorry, Hinako is amazing, even after this episode, <laughs> fucking amazing, best damn girl, or best chef besides Megami and female character wise, Megami is just too damn adorable, like, I just want to fucking cuddle her, I, I just want to give her a fucking hug, like, seriously, she's so fucking cute, but, okay, Hinako, best sensei, best teacher, best, you know, like, pro chef, just like, yeah. Okay, getting back on topic. Shinomiya, I was told by Chibits that he has a spinoff series, and he was so popular, he got a spinoff series. So, obviously, he does something in the future that makes everybody start to like him. Fine. Fine. You're not going to tell me, though, the beginning of what he did in these past couple episodes was not a dickish move. Like, what he straight up did was dickish. It, it was. Let's face the facts here. What he did was kind of messed up. And even his attitude in this, straight up too arrogant. He's very arrogant as a chef. Like, he, he is a very good skilled chef. I will not, you know, put him down and say he's not a good chef because he does make skilled food and he has made a name for himself. Okay, I'm not putting him down on that. But he is way too arrogant because here's the thing. Everybody needs to understand. 
Just because you're fucking amazing and you're the best chef supposedly in France or anywhere in the world and you're given the title, let's say I was given the title the best chef of Earth. Like, I'm the best chef in the entire fucking world, That which would definitely be a lie. Like, no, no, I I'm not the best chef. But let's say I was given that title. There is always people better than you than what you are. You just have yet to find them. There's always someone better. Always. It, it always will happen. And so this dude is too damn arrogant thinking that some students, some kids that look like novices or noobs can't stand up to him. And that is going to be his downfall. And that's the downfall of any great person. Thinking and getting so up there on their high horse that they can't be defeated. That, that's pretty much what that means. Like, what that scene really meant. Like, if you have so much arrogance and pride building up to where, like, oh, they, these, these fucking students, they can't touch me. Like, yeah, I'm not going all out. I'm not going to go all out because, I mean, there's no reason to. They're just stupid students. That, that's what he was thinking in this episode. And that's going to be his downfall. Megami and Soma is going to win because of that dude being very arrogant. And I can't wait to see him fucking cry. Like, he, he had a tear in that preview. <laughs> yeah, fucking tear. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I know a lot of you like him. Not putting you down for it. If you like his character, that's great. I, I, I'm i glad you guys like his character. And I probably will like his character later on. I, I might, man, judging by what you all told me. But at the moment, just give me some peace of mind. Just just give me a moment to say he deserves it. He deserves that tear. You know, after he cries and after this, okay, then I think I can let it go. I, then I can, because... After what I saw in the preview, like, it, it seems like he's going to learn a valuable lesson. You don't underestimate students. You don't underestimate the hard work of students. You don't underestimate the hard work of the little guys. And that's pretty much what that was emphasizing. So, Shinomiya, I'm looking forward to your defeat next week. I'm really looking forward to that. You know what? I'm not even going to read the manga. Like, I'm not going to read the manga to read ahead real quick because I was actually probably going to after I'm finished with this, done with the daily reviews. But I want to wait. I want to wait to see it in anime form. And then I'm most likely, depending on the outcome of next week's episode, I will read ahead. But at the moment, though, fuck <laughs> Okay, so point of this episode, main point, I guess, is build up, set up for the Food Wars, and also showcasing Shinomiya's dish and how arrogant he is. I've kind of already expressed how arrogant he was and how he acted throughout this entire episode, so I don't need to really cover that. But the main point is, is him demonstrating his dish and seeing the people, the chefs that were tasting his food, they, they have internal food gasms. And I've already kind of told you at the beginning of the video, magical girls. Magical girls. Like, the fuck, man? Magical girl transformations. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, episode didn't get me as heated as last week's episode, because what I saw just really agitated me. It really agitated me, because there was just so much hypocrisy in what he was saying, and what he did, actually, or just how the test was designed, actually. But, I'm glad it's all going right right now, and this was a very good episode to showcase Megami's skills, also, along with what the main point of this episode was. As we know... Soma initiated this food war to be able to save Megami from being expelled. And that was the entire point of it. And to see how this episode actually had to where Megami took the lead, she was the lead chef, and she had to commandeer the ship and make it to where she had to make the dish, and then, you know, Soma listened to her, it gives development for Megami. It's not where just Soma is dragging Megami along by the chains, like, oh, here, follow me behind me. Megami is taking her own steps to be a good chef, and I like that. I like that a lot. I like how she's being able to hold her own, stand up for what she is, and be able to make food without Soma's help, because that showcases that she is very independent as a chef, and she needs that to be able to succeed in the near future. So a very good case in point of, you know, this episode, just to showcase how Megami's going to fare in the future. So tell me your thoughts. How do you feel about this week's episode of Food Wars? It's fucking epic, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to see next week. That preview. Ah! Okay, so uh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Y'all horrible day or not, wherever you live, please be safe. Chibi out.